All right, I know I bought this book last week. It actually came out two weeks ago. And this is like, you know, there's a whole new book cycle thing going on here. But I'm just going to straight up be honest with you. I am declaring this book, I'm proclaiming it, Book of the Week for three weeks in a row. Like, that's how much of a Book of the Week it is. I read a lot of good stuff, you know? There's been a lot of, like, some pretty cool stuff here and the things I've been reading, but I just grabbed these because they were laying right here. But this one. Oh, yeah. It was that good. So, basically, like, uh, we come in here and we're introduced to a new dude. And this is him back in the 70s. Actually, probably the late 60s, where he's like a... Uh, anti-war, pacifist kind of dude. You know? And we see the evolution of this dude. Oh, hey, I didn't even notice like the little pinstroke for the shadow hashure line there on his clothes like went outside the panel. That's kind of weird. Kind of crazy, but kind of weird. Uh, anyway, this dude, who is totally like a hippie, and currently runs a bar in Miami, now has a serious problem. And what is that serious problem? Russian mobsters. What did you think the problem was going to be? This is Hotline Miami, dude. So naturally the dude gets a mask, and he just starts obliterating every mobster he sees. And it's super satisfying watching his journey from place A over here to place B Way over, actually, it's no, it's over here. It's off the end of the table. That's how far over we've gone. We are no longer on the table. And he spins this book. We see him as a family man. We glimpse his evolution as he transitions from one person to the next. And then, because it's Hala Miami, of course, we jump right into him mass murdering a bunch of mobsters. I don't know what else to say about this book. I loved it. It was fantastic. Uh, the dialogue, like, did not feel forced. It felt like a real guy going through real stuff. <laughs> like, that's, it. that's, that's like as high a praise as I can get. Like, it didn't feel like this was just, like, strictly scripted in the way this guy's life went. It felt like there was actually, you know, a little bit of, like, real stuff there. I mean, isn't that kind of normal for people? You know, every now and then you have, like, a crazy thought, like, wouldn't the world be a better place if, and then the if ends with like some bad thing that you would do, you know, wouldn't the world be a better place if I opened my cold, refreshing beverage right now, as opposed to waiting till I was done recording this video? Hmm. Maybe. But I'm not going to do that. In his case, it's more like there are bad people in the world. And I'm going to make sure that those bad people uh, don't cause a lot of trouble. And of course, it's not just like he's going out and killing people. He's a family man, like I said. Oh man, look at that overhead light there. So we get to see him dealing with the consequences of that in his life. I mean, this is him and his wife right here. You know? What? The Russians? No! I told you. They've never been to the club. It was just a drunken white boy. Mm, so why are you this late then? What's that smell? Don't tell me you've been drinking. Haha, <laughs> wait, uh, uh, it was, um, uh, actually a, uh, group of German tourists. Because, see, she caught him with a black eye. So he is just having to spin out lies. Telling lies to his loved one, you know, to his wife. And his real life, outside of the mass killing, suffers. It's kind of the same kind of arc, the trajectory that a character like, you know, Spider-Man goes on. A lot of these mass killers, they're alone. They're just some dude. In his case, he's some dude with a family. Uh, and I think that kind of made it hit a little bit more realistic, a little harder, a little bit more, more real feeling. I, I'm, I'm making up words now. But like in uh, previous issues, you know, the main character of this series... He did suffer loss, his best friend. His girlfriend left him, but even his best friend, he and his best friend weren't even like that close, you know. This guy's got a family. 
And evidently, uh, he's like the guy that they called at the end of issue six to clean up the mess or something, I think is what's going on here. Which means we're going to have Masked Killer versus Masked Killer. And who's going to win? If this guy wins, you know, I guess it's the end of the arc, right? And the little mobster boy, who uh, there's a tie-in with the little mobster boy in this series, uh, gets dealt with. If the other guy wins, well, this dude's family is going to suffer. Like, the stakes are going... Foomp. Which, given that, you know, this is a series founded on people being shot and murdered in large numbers, the stakes somehow going higher than people being shot and murdered uh, seems crazy, but it is. It absolutely is. This whole thing is building up to a fun crescendo of carnage, and I can't wait for the next issue. Like, absolutely, number eight needs to come into my hands right now, man. It needs to fly in here, boom, and let me read it. I don't care if it has to travel time to do it. It needs to come here now. Thank you all for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.